this is Detlef Schlich, and today we dive together with Dory Abelman into the deep, deep, deep and exciting creative ocean of the creative mind, actually. Uh, hi, Dory. Hi, Tatla. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, it's cool to have you here. It's really nice. We had already two sessions now, and it's so interesting and so exciting to to speak with Toronto, more than less. I mean, Canada, close to Toronto. That's where, where Dory is based. And um, mm -hmm. I must say we have a good connection now. I must say as well that I'm so happy that I got my fiberglass now because uh, um, it makes life podcast life so much easier um especially if you live so remote like like here you know that is so mad sometimes but it works cool dory great so dory is um has a podcast as well and and we're gonna have since uh, almost two weeks a crossover promotion with his podcast as a pre-roll in front of my podcast and this podcast you probably uh used to listen to it already at least to the teaser is called uh, learn for love and uh yeah that's actually the this 20 something minutes we want to talk about his idea the background um how it came to it i mean i think it is a great idea to to start a, a podcast like that because in times like now where where we where we're gonna already rely more than less to to zoom and skype and 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 to artificial intelligence and 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 it's still nice that that uh that we we still can can inform us or, or remind remind ourselves that we still are humans aren't we dory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So let's go. So tell us more about your idea and when when did you create this idea and who, how many people are involved and and uh, um, yeah, I'm excited to hear from you. Yeah. Sure. Well, thanks so much for um, for having me on the show. Um. So yeah. So I help to run a podcast. It's called the Learn to Love Podcast, and it's all about helping people build healthier relationships and stronger families. Um, the idea came to me um, when I realized that there is a lot of separation and divorce among yeah. couples mm. today. Um, and I'm a child of divorced parents myself. Okay. I was always curious, yeah. what keeps people together? Mm. The, the one and two that aren't getting divorced, what are they doing differently? That was kind of my, my question. Mm. Um, and I was really interested in psychology. Um, so in my bachelor's, I took a bunch of, uh, my focus was actually health sciences and health promotion. So I took a lot of psychology um, themed courses then and continued health, my learning. Health scientists. Health sciences, yeah. Is that is that a uh, is that um, um, can you study that or or is it just a part of your bioinformatics stud? Um? So that was for my bachelor's. So my bachelor's wasn't in bioinformatic. Um, there was some biology component there, but the focus I took a lot of courses also on uh, health promotion, behavior change, um, public health, this kind of stuff. That's interesting. And then I transitioned now into the masters more into the the bioinformatic. That's great. I mean, yeah, yeah. Go on, yeah. Yeah, and um, so I, I started reading with my, my girlfriend, Bettina, and we read dozens of books. Um, and what? About, I started reading a lot with my, my girlfriend. Her name is Bettina, and she was also, she's involved too, yeah. um, reading. Um, and we started to realize that we're, we're actually learning a lot of interesting things, yeah. um, but also that a lot of people aren't, aren't going to read all these books. So Learn to Love, essentially... It's a way to just summarize the best of what we know um, from these books with analogies, with infographics, mm -hmm. um, pictures, and just an easy to understand way in whatever medium you like. So if you like written content, we have the blog, um, learnlove.ca slash blog. Uh, if you like to listen, we have the podcast. I put that as well. I put it as well in, in the description on my thing and on YouTube. So, so yeah, yeah, but... 
of them. Fantastic. And we have a YouTube channel too. So if you like if you like videos, you can check us what's, out on, what's, on what's YouTube. What's the YouTube channel? What's Learn to, learn to love. As well. Learn, yeah. Learn, learn to it's not learn for love, it's learn learn to love. No? To yeah, love, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like learning how to love kind of. So like learn learn to love. And um Instagram. We about Instagram. Yeah, too. and also our, our Instagram is Facebook. Learn to Love Media. Learn to Love Media. If you search that you'll find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um yeah. And we also have a Pinterest too. If you search Learn to Love, you should find us there as well. Yeah. Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So you guys you started to to read all this information. How long are you together with your girlfriend? Oh. Um a year and a half coming so, up. So so there's half. there's still no there was still no reason to read that together. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean that was something I was curious before and she was curious too. So um I was already reading and then she Yeah, she started as well. And we talk a lot about different things. So we talk about like teamwork, um, stress, conflict resolution, yeah. self-care, um, how people share and receive love, stages of a relationship. Um, so all of that is on our show. And, and we try to talk about it from a, a very psychology perspective. Okay, it, what is um, she studying? She studies international development right now. That's her master's. International development. Development, yeah. So that's like... Um, economics and um like like companies that do business in multiple countries yeah um but she's also interested in psychology so she's actually thinking of going back to school for for counseling or something mm -hmm. afterwards i mean you i must say you do that very good i was listening to your podcast and uh i was i was really thinking wow that that, that is uh because uh, listeners they, they 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 really can feel that that you are interested in it you know and that you're ah thank you and that and that you really try to 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 change a little bit with your podcast too you know so so you as well somehow a digital shaman you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you i could share some quick tips from from the show um so we, we talk a lot about the brain. I'm actually writing a blog post now called A Cognitive Neuroscience Approach to Understand Feeling. So like mm -hmm. the few, that's just kind of like the, right. the basis. But, but something I could talk about as related to um, anger and the way we respond to anger. So we have different parts of our brain. We have the, the frontal lobe, uh, which is like behind our forehead. And we have the limbic system, which is kind of like in the middle of the brain. And there's Hi a little almond-shaped limbic. The hippocampus? Um, yeah, so the, the hippocampus is um, involved All right. mm -hmm, in, in, uh, in memory transfer as All well. Right. And it's related to the limbic system. All right. But I want to talk about the amygdala, which is an almond-shaped structure in the middle of the brain. Mm -hmm. That's part of the limbic system. Mm-hmm. And um, now the thing is, the amygdala is closer to the brainstem, to the spine, essentially, mm -hmm. and to, to like the nerves that enter our body than the frontal lobe, which is further away. It's all the way up here, but the amygdala is down here. Uh huh. Yeah. So that means that in a time of crisis, of conflict, of, of a lot of emotion and stress, the amygdala is going to take over. It's going to stop signals and react to signals before they even get to the frontal lobe. So it blocks everything. It yeah, it kind of like reacts right away before your brain can even think about it. So what happens is, is you react without thinking. And you can actually see this in other forms. Yeah. So for example, have you ever touched like a really hot plate and just like you, you moved your hand away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like before you even thought about it, your hand was already away? Yeah. Well, that, that was the reaction that occurred actually in your spine um, before it even mm. got to your brain. You, mm. you moved your arm away. Yeah, because later it, it would be too late it. already. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, if, if it, you waited till it got to your, your frontal lobe, you would be burned, like way more burned than if you just... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So sure. we have this yeah. analogy then um, called first rescue, which is that if somebody is, is drowning, yeah. um, let's say they're drowning in water, 
Yeah. The first thing you do is you pull them out of the water. Yeah. And you help them dry. You help them breathe again. You know, calm down. And then you can ask them a question like, you know, what were you doing in the deep end? What were you doing alone at night when there was no lifeguard? Yeah. But the first thing you do is you pull them out of the water first. First you rescue. Sure, yeah. Then you do anything else. And the same is true with our emotions. Because if somebody is very, like, drowning in their emotions, they have a lot of emotion right now, let's say anger, stress, we first have to get their amygdala calm back online before we can connect to the frontal cortex but this is ha- logic this ha- and reason yeah but this is hardwired isn't it i mean it's 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 hardwired in our brain since since we since we became conscious actually hunter yeah, gatherers this, yeah this this kind of system but by understanding how the system works we can actually get it to work for us and deal better with situations of conflict you can think of it kind of like a car so you have like a driver and a passenger in the yeah. car yeah And the car represents your consciousness, your your thoughts. Yeah. So if one of them was your thoughts, let's say there's a driver and passenger. So one of them is your thoughts and one of them is your feelings. Yeah. Who do you, who do you think is the dri- driver? Is it the thoughts or the feelings? Um I mean a- a- according according to to that what you what you told me um is it is it the uh, the feelings because the feelings they 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 start i mean the instinct is still older than than the intellect isn't it yes and and for a long time the classical notion in a sense was that we we act primarily based on logic but if i ask you like why don't you do something like why don't you do something what's usually like an answer people give yeah i, I mean would, yeah i mean just, like, I just yeah You first, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I just tried to picture a situation where, where, where I'm sitting in the car and I have the, 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 the red flashing light and according to, to all, all that what I've learned that, that you have to stop at red, you know, my, 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 my feet will go on the brake just according to the process. But the, this reaction actually, you know, so that I know that I've learned it. So I'm trained in that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That actually has to do with, with habits, um, which is something else we talk about on the show. The idea is that essentially neurons that fire together, wire together. So any response any that, that you show in your body is a yeah. sequence of neurons firing in your brain. Yeah. Now, your brain wants to be able to work efficiently, right? It doesn't want to use more energy than it needs to. So what it's going to do is it's going to put neurons that generally fire one after the other. Yeah. It's going to almost, in a sense, connect them deeper together mm. so that when the one goes off, all the others can go off without you thinking about it. Mm. And an example of this is walking. If you ever see a young child learning to walk, it takes a lot of mental energy mm. to, to remember. First, I lift up this leg, you know, mm. then I put it down, then I lift up this leg and to balance. Yeah. But when an adult walks, they don't even think that they're walking anymore. They can focus their their energy on other tasks, which is actually problematic because if somebody's walking yeah. and they're talking on the phone yeah. and they're not paying attention to walking, yeah. they're going to walk into a pole or walk into a pool or walk into a piece of glass because yeah. if, if they're they, not if paying they, attention to if it. If they're not good at multitasking, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But back to the, the car analogy. So the driver and the passenger. If you ask somebody, why don't you do something? The answer is usually, at least I would say, is because I don't feel like it. Yeah. Because you don't feel like it. It's the feelings. Mm-hmm. And what happens is in anger, the driver of the car, the feeling brain, is flooring the accelerator and taking the car like rapidly off-road at a dangerous pace when mm-hmm. someone's angry. Mm-hmm. And the passenger really has no say, the thinking brain, because the amygdala is hijacking. It's called an emotional hijacking, actually, many of the signals before they even reach the frontal cortex. I, I like this expression, emotionally hijacking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, a lot of us, in times of anger and conflict, we try to connect to the person on a logical way. We say something like, it doesn't make sense what you're doing. You know, why do you feel like that? you know, it, like, of course this happened. 
we're trying to connect based on, on logic and reason. Like, it doesn't make sense for you to be doing that. But the thing is, we're trying to connect to the passenger of the car when the driver is flooring the accelerator and, and moving the car off road. And that's not going to work. We have to first get the driver to get the car back on the road and at a stable pace before we start a conversation with the passenger. And that's mm. the first rescue. First, we rescue them from the emotion. And then we can focus on logic and reason and talking to the thinking brain. Which is not but so how easy. Do we, yeah. But how do we do it? But the thing is, humans actually respond to emotion in very similar ways across the lifespan and across cultures. And mm. our instinct of dealing with a crying baby, the instinct that comes to us is often actually very, very good for also mm. working with adults. So for example, if a baby cries, mm. what does somebody do if the baby cries? What's the instinct? What do you imagine when, when if you saw a crying baby? Um, I mean, you, yeah, you start thinking about that. that what is it? Is it, is it hungry? I mean, if you, first of all, you, you see the situation and if nothing nothing spe special is going on, like if the baby is not getting hurt or whatever, you think maybe it's just, just a, a, a minor issue. But what's the first thing you do if the baby's crying? What do you do? The first thing? I mean, I take it probably. Wow. Yeah, e exactly. You pick it up. Yeah. You hold it. Yeah. And then you can you hold it. You maybe you rock it. Yeah. And what do you say? I'm here. I'm here. Like don't oh, worry. It's, it's good. I'm it's here. good. Don't worry. Everything's fine. I'm yeah. exactly. And those three things are actually the best way to get the driver back on the road. And adults just a bit differently. Instead mm. of holding, we ask if we can give them a hug, because feelings are called feelings because mm. we feel them in our body. Feelings are emotions that we feel in our body, but we can actually use feeling to create emotion. It goes mm -hmm. both ways. Emotions mm -hmm. create feelings and feelings create emotions. Yeah. So for example, if somebody feels alone, mm -hmm. by hugging them, mm -hmm. we make them feel like there's someone else there because they can feel physical contact mm -hmm. on their skin. Sure. And then yeah. they get the feeling that they're not alone. Sure, sure, sure. And yeah. then they get an emotion of a feeling like they're not alone, feeling safe. That's another thing we talk about, that anger is actually primarily an expression of not feeling safe. I mean, But that's the thing. Yeah. Hug. Yeah. Then instead of rocking like you would a baby, mm -hmm. you could do something like you could ask if you can stroke their arm, for example, or like, like do something where you are stroking them in like a loving way, if they're okay with it, if it's like your partner. And it makes them feel a sensation that someone else is there. Absolutely. Yeah. I was wondering. Um, just keep your 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 thing in mind where you want to continue. So so because in times like now, hacking, uh, it is. I mean, uh, it. I, I'm a little bit afraid about that. That that this cultural thing is getting lost due to our new norm normal and due to the situation that people are getting more and more afraid to to hug somebody else you know so do, do you think sometimes as well about that how um about the consequences and and um and how 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 could you what 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 is your impression about that yeah i agree with you completely actually when when i say that i i mean it mostly towards like partners in a relationship kind of like a husband wife boyfriend like two partners yeah. um, but in terms of other people I would just always ask you know is it okay if I and then do you but no, I would I, say with, yeah I mean with I, other people yeah. though I wouldn't resort to that I do the the last thing which is the other thing you tell the baby you say I'm here I'm here and that's the same thing you tell your partner I'm with you like we're, we're in this together I'm here with you and that's just a big thing related to teamwork too is often when our partners come to us and they're sad we we like kind of tense up and we walk away we're like I don't know how to help them but our partners aren't looking for us to solve their part their problems most of the time they just want us to say I'm with you I'm here and make them feel like they're not alone and we talk way more about this on our on our show uh, too on learn to love we have five whole hour-long episodes about conflict resolution if you're if you're interested in, in following this and learning more it's it is it is great i must i must say uh 
you guys, you put a lot of effort into that. And I think uh, if people are really in need, um, they should they should listen to it. It's good. Yeah, it's 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 really good. So so, so you're gonna do that. Who who else is involved in 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 in, in this show? I've heard as well a couple of other voices. Um, yeah, so my, my girlfriend, Bettina, um, oh. she's involved uh, in the show. And also, we're doing interviews now with, with mental health uh, practitioners and, and uh, coaches. Um, so you'll hear their voices on the show, too, in and future episodes. Th there, wa there was a deep voice. I've, I've, I was listening uh, in the YouTube um, podcast. And there was it wasn't you. Um, we ran some like ads like uh like cross promotion so it could have been another podcaster who oh, all right. who had a s segment that we uh, placed there. ah okay all right okay um yeah that's cool i mean before we we almost again through before we finish I, I still would like to to philosophize a little bit uh about this this hugging subject um or actually the culture of 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 hugging i mean here in europe or or it's here it's the case if if i mean I, i'm probably i'm normally hacked too often um mm. uh but i mean but I, i'm not hacking people if i don't know them but but if i really if i really like them i feel like i oh, come on you know so so it's so hack you and uh, not 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 everyone is 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 uh comfortable with that but this is an emotional thing you know and sometimes it's, I mean, is it okay if i hack you that's that's already I mean, then I, I prefer to leave it, you know. So, no. and uh, I really wonder if all this will change now after Corona and after COVID, you know. So, if if society really, really uh, uh, gets this paradigm shift that they stop hugging at all, especially now in Zoom and Skype times and and and, um, and I wonder if if you guys already thought a little bit about that, in, you know, so uh, about about advice and and ab about uh, um, how how society. Uh, uh, I mean, do you feel the same? I mean, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, people having less contact in general. That's why when when we talk about it, we really mean for like a, a family member or like a partner. You have to really think like, is it my role? to help somebody else calm down who's like who I'm not close to in which case I like I wouldn't advise asking or, or like going to hug them because you don't it's it's like it's not your role kind of like you're not close yeah, to them yeah but the thing is if it's like a very close friend a family member or a partner then you would be having content you'd likely be having some sort of contact with them anyway in which case you could ask but in terms of zoom that goes to our other channels I mean there, there are other channels of of dealing with anger and conflict too and um, like if you see like if someone sees a therapist for example the therapist won't ask to hug them but they can still be effective and that's also through understanding how anger affects our bodies so often when people are angry it's like they have a lot of pressure and they need to let it go but we can help them let it go by asking them the right questions and being curious for example what do you feel in your body where do you feel it what's going through your head right now tell me more like using these kinds of prompts because talking is thinking too when people talk they kind of piece together thoughts in their head and organize them and just by giving people the opportunity to express themselves through mm. talking we mm. can also help them sort That's things out absolutely in their head. yeah i mean for that is, is a podcast like this actually good as well i've already mentioned that so i have you're now my my seventh talk guest and uh, it's so cool somehow. I mean, I think it's things like this they are somehow relieving as well for 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 everyone. And I saw that already that in in uh, in recent episodes, you know, that that artists are as well very happy to to be part of it because they can express themselves. And uh, you know, it's you know by yourself that 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 having having a a, a discourse is always uh, good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then I would suggest, Dory, um, if you if you give me a um, couple of links from 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 the stuff what you read, I could put that as well. If if people are interested in researching, in my description, uh, under underneath as well, like like uh, any other information you want you want to put me in, you know, and people can eventually start to 
to research a little bit as well about your podcast and ab about you and uh, and it is uh, uh, Dory Abelman uh, he is on Instagram yeah at learn to love media on Instagram and and on uh, the podcast is is learn learn to love the learn to love podcast yeah learn to love podcast uh, weekly no? We weekly or more than once a week we usually post about every five days every five yeah. days but but what i learned is is you offer as well sessions don't you no so at the time we don't offer any sessions but if there's something you'd like to see talked about on the blog or on the podcast that's something i'd be happy to to look into all right and, and get guests to talk about that too is there anything else what you would like to add or um just to say thank you yeah thank you so much for for having me on the show it's been a pleasure and um thank you also to all the listeners of rt-tude uh for your time i hope you found this uh this content and the description with the car meaningful it was great i've really enjoyed these three sessions and uh i hope we can do that sometimes again i mean uh i am already planning with story another thing that's that's a little Uh, sneak preview uh, I'm probably gonna do I design a shamanic um, session with story and we, we might we might gonna gonna research in that from the uh, scientific way as well so Dory will be wired with a lot of wires uh, I think about a, a very special scenario and um, we probably we will record it for another show somehow and I'm looking forward to Yeah, that 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 Dory that that he came actually to me and said, "Detlef, I really like your uh, your thesis and uh, your podcast. Do you do you like to do a crossover promotion with me?" And I told him, "Yes, I I do, and uh, I'm I'm so delighted that 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 you encouraged me. Honestly, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a it's been a big pleasure to work together. Yeah, so." Yeah, so dear listeners, so I would say so if you like the show, um, listen to the two other episodes with Dory and myself, and uh, yeah, have a lovely day, week, and whatever. And um, thank you, Dory, having you in my show. That was great. And uh, take care. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, Dory. Bye, Dotla. Thanks Bye. for your time. Yeah.